My name is Dr. Giles Warrington. I'm a sport and exercise physiologist. Uh, I work in the Department of Physical Education and Sports Sciences in the University of Limerick. Today I'm going to talk to you about sleep and why we need to wake up to sleep. I'd like to start off with uh, two questions. How many of you sleep? And how many of you get enough sleep? If I was to ask an audience how many of them actually sleep, 100% of them would raise their hands. In relation to the second question, however, only about 10 to 20% would typically keep that, the hands raised. So clearly there's a difference that takes place there. Sleep is the most important behavioral experience that we have throughout our lives. The average person will spend approximately a third of their lives sleeping, which with normal life expectancy would equate to somewhere just under 27 years. So clearly sleep is very important. But we still don't know why we sleep. A lot of theories abound as to why we sleep, but the scientific community still does not have a clear consensus in terms of its importance. So how much sleep do we need? According to the National Sleep Foundation, adults require somewhere between seven to nine hours sleep per night. In the early 1940s, the average sleep was about eight hours. However, in recent times, there's been a dramatic reduction in the amount of time we sleep. And it's now in the region of 6.8 hours for the average person. Sleep deprivation is classified as anything below seven hours, so we are a sleep-deprived society. From a cognitive standpoint, sleep has some very important factors in terms of memory function, learning, creativity. And that's interesting when we talk about adolescents, for example. Adolescents, for about 10 years of their lives, adopt what we call an owl chronotype. So in other words, they're alert and awake at nighttime, in the evenings, and in the mornings, they're tired and groggy. So from a learning standpoint, it makes no sense that schools would start at 8.30 in the morning if we want to enhance their education and learning. So really, schools should start at 10 to 10.30 in the morning. But obviously, from a policy planning and logistics point of view, that is going to be extremely challenging. Sleep is an important part to play in terms of physiology as well, and your physiological processes, particularly in relation to recovery, regeneration, but also maintaining your immune function. And interesting, what we know in terms of sleep regards to health and well-being, a lot of it relates to research around sleep deprivation. And we know that people who are sleep deprived have higher incidence of cancer, diabetes, other factors such as cardiovascular disease, and also Alzheimer's and other mental health factors. So again, it is very important that we, we do get sleep. Interestingly, when we look at shift workers within Ireland, 15% of the workforce are shift workers. And there's a strong incidence, particularly between night shift workers and incidence of cancer, which are above, well above the expected norms. And that has led the World Health Organization to classify night shift workers as a possible carcinogen. So again, that's a, a concerning factor that we need to bear in mind. So how do we improve sleep? Well, there's a lot of things that we can do to enhance sleep of individuals. Much of it revolves around routine going to bed at a similar time each night, waking up at a similar time. Unfortunately, weekends you can't bank sleep. Things like exercise and nutrition are important as well. We know that regular exercise enhances sleep. However, you should probably avoid excessive uh, high intensity exercise probably within the first three hours before you go to bed. Also, in terms of meals and planning of meals, it's advisable not to have large meals within about two hours of going to bed also. Hygiene and sleep hygiene is a very important consideration to bear in mind as well. The bedroom should be cool, quiet and dark. It shouldn't be used for nesting habits such as watching TV, doing homework and most importantly uh, using uh, uh, smartphones and tablets. Because one of the challenges you have here is the blue light that the eye is exposed from uh, as a result of using these actually suppresses a hormone called melatonin which makes you sleep. So your brain thinks it's daytime when in fact it's nighttime. So really, phones should be put away within the, the three hours before you go to bed. And that applies for children as well as adults. Other things to bear in mind is things like smoking uh, and alcohol. S uh, smoking, tobacco is a, a, a stimulant, so it keeps you awake. There's a common misconception that alcohol helps you sleep. It may lead you to sleep more rapidly, however, your sleep is far more fragmented, so the quality of your sleep is going to be dramatically impaired. So again, there's a lot of factors we need to bear in mind. One simple tip as well is to have a notebook by the side of the bed. So before you go to bed, 
write down your thoughts and reflections on the day, but also maybe tasks that you have to do the following day. This effectively helps you to declutter the mind and prepare you for your nighttime sleep. So they will be important considerations to bear in mind. So clearly, from what we know already, there's a lot of research to be done still, but we know that sleep is very important for health and well-being, and it very much should be taken seriously. If you'd like to find any more about my research, you can contact me through the Department of Physical Education and Sports Sciences at the University of Limerick. Thank you.